Freedom, that is the topic of tonight's byline. I'm wondering what part of free speech the folks at the University of Regina don't get, or freedom of association, or freedom of peaceful assembly. Late yesterday afternoon in Regina, two activists were arrested for simply speaking on the campus of that university. Bill Watcott and Peter LaBarbera were arrested as they set up a display at the University of Regina and attempted to espouse their views about homosexuality. You can agree with those views. You can despise those views. It shouldn't matter. These men should be allowed to speak, but they were not. They were shut down by campus security and Regina police as students cheered. Did they hit anyone? No. Did they threaten anyone? No. They were simply there with flyers and placards. Now, listen closely as university security asks what ta what caught to leave. He doesn't have to, he says, and he says he has the right to be there. And listen carefully to what the security officer says. So I've, I've won two court cases, and I do believe I have a charter right to speak here. I know you do know who you know, okay, the security officer admits that Watcott has the right to be on a publicly owned university land and present his message, but then says, yeah, but you got to leave anyway. The police moved in and arrested them right away. What were they charged with? The news release put out by the Regina Police Service stated that they face charges of mischief under Section 4301C of the Criminal Code, willfully interfering with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property, to wit, the University of Regina. I'm sorry, standing in a wide open public space with a couple of signs and flyers is interfering with the lawful use of property? Give me a break. What caught faces an actual court date in late May? Is that right? This La Barbera is still facing deportation. He wasn't released. All this for speaking and holding a sign. Remember this, the same university. This is the same university where our friend John Gormley was speaking and was interrupted by protesters. And stop your lies! Why don't you take your mask yeah. No! It stinks in here! Any one of you people that, that live in my territory, if you got a reason to hate Indians, now you have a good reason to hate us. We don't hate. No. Is that what you guys think? No. no. I know about your secret societies, your religions, and all your damn, no. all your, your, your raping and your pillaging of our women and children. What happened at that incident back in March? Well, no arrests, even though it was far more threatening than anything Watcott and La Barbera were doing. This is pure politics. Gormley is considered a right-wing meanie by the leftists on the campus, so he doesn't deserve protection to put forward his ideas in a very civil way. And besides, his adversary was a native, so I mean, why do anything? He's probably just a victim. Watcott and La Barbera, though, they were arrested not because of what they were doing, but because of their message. Their message is the only reason that they were picked up by police. Is this what we want in Canada, police arresting you for what you say? If you're thinking, yes, I don't like what they have to say, then ask yourself what will happen when they come for you. Some people don't think that's a problem, and besides, they don't really believe in free speech anyway. Here's what Leah Kaiser of the University of Regina Pride Center told the Regina Leader Post. I think freedom of speech has its limits, and when it starts inciting hatred and violence, as I personally believe this has been, that's a line I think we should stop crossing because we're not talking about opinions anymore. We're actually hurting human beings. Well, except Watcott and La Barbera have not been advocating violence. They disagree with homosexuality, and they were met by a counter-protest organized by Kaiser in the Pride Center. That's how it should have ended. Two groups with opposing views making their case and letting the public make up their own minds. But remember the old saying, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt me? Most of us learned that from our mothers or on the schoolyard, but apparently Thomas Chase, the University of Regina provost and vice president, he didn't learn that. He thinks words hurt and young minds need to be protected. Here's what he said to the Regina Leader Post. The materials were graphic and the materials were disturbing. The materials we felt could harm members of this campus community who we have a duty to protect and support. Bollocks! A university has, the, has to protect people from ideas? Really? Mr. Chase, you are an academic. You work in the world of ideas. Your profession has spent centuries pushing the boundaries and now you are throwing out that tradition. You're throwing it right out the window trying to protect people from politically correct ideas. You and your university are a disgrace to academia, a disgrace. 
Unfortunately, you're not alone. We've seen similar attacks on free speech across the country. University and college campuses are strangling free speech and academics. Well, I'd like to say they're simply being silent, but they're not. They're active, like Thomas Chase, the PhD from the University of Regina, or the former justice minister turned University of Ottawa president, Alan Rock. He's the guy that wrote to Ann Coulter and warned her about spreading hate crimes before she even arrived in Ottawa, and obviously without reading a damn word she'd ever said or written. University is a waste of time if this is what you're going to get, folks. If you want to sit around with a bunch of people all affirming the same politically correct ideas and views, then just get a job at most major media organizations. You'll save yourself $40,000 in the protest. And it beats enriching people like Thomas Chase, who is afraid that words might hurt you. And that's the byline. <laughs>